Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture. My name is Dino. It's on cognitive load theory. Let's just call it CLT for now, shall we? Uh, the focus of this video is to explore cognitive load theory's impact on teaching and learning. But first off, let's start off with a couple of definitions to give you some context for what we're going to be discussing. Uh, first, cognitive load theory, again, CLT. It is the amount of information working memory, WM, can hold at one time. This is according to Sweller in his uh, brown great, uh, groundbreaking work on CLT. Uh, from this, uh, working memory has capacity limits. Like it is not infinite. It is a finite source, like a resource. Uh, now the second, def second definition of two, working memory, WM. Uh, working memory is the, quote, retention of a small amount of information in a readily accessible form. It helps to facilitate planning, comprehension, reasoning and problem solving. From this you can tell it's really useful for information processing and learning. From this, and based on Cowan's work, uh, you want to maximize working memory while teaching to enhance your students' planning, comprehension, reasoning, and problem solving abilities. Like the better you do that, the better they will learn. Here's the implications of that. And I just touched about them a little bit just now. Um, Working memory, again, has limited capacity as a result of your teaching, and, and I know a lot, of, a lot of people use technology and various devices like smartphones or laptops, as well as various interfaces on computer screens, etc. From this, you should try to avoid, when using technology or teaching, to overload working memory with additional activities that do not directly contribute to learning. And again, this is based on Spoiler's work. So from this, uh, I'll, I'll give an example from my own experience. You, you want to use simpler instead of more complicated technology interfaces or platforms. For example, I teach a variety of courses dealing with visualization, communication, and design. When I teach specifically visualization and design, I want to teach a visualization or, or design concept. Canva is an online platform. Illustrator is an Adobe Illustrated platform. Canva has a ton of really high quality looking online templates. Illustrator has a ferociously steep learning curve. As a result, if you want to teach some really basic introductory visualization and design concepts, you might want to have students work on this Canva online template earlier in the semester and have them work on Illustrator later so that you're making it simple for them to learn the concepts. If you want to have them learn the concepts, it's, again, it's easier if you're just not dealing with that over challenge working memory from using, again, a complicated technology device or interface. I'm going to do a comparison to sort of make, make this uh, idea of cognitive load somewhat more, more simple. Uh, which model do you prefer, figure one or two? Uh, they're both information processing models. Uh, the first one has labels directly on it. The second one has a legend with numbers that connect it. I'll give you a second, which one do you prefer? I would say the labeled uh, diagram, the one on the left, uh, figure one, it places lower demand on working memory than the labels and numbers listed on, si on the side, which is in figure number two, the one on the right. So you see for each of these various boxes, like it's still the three blue boxes, there's that rehearsal loop on top of, th on top of working memory on the left or three on the right. And again, so you can just sort of watch the process on the on figure one, and you can see, oh, I see on the far left incoming information, it goes in sensor memory, it's either forgotten or goes into working memory, etc. When you look at the figure two on the right, you have to look at the numbers, go down to the legend, go back up, and it's like you're, uh, you're basically going back and forth, which puts a, a bigger load on your working memory. Um, as a result, you, you'd, you'd imagine you want to extend working memory and reduce cognitive load whenever you can. Uh, I'll give you a couple of different ways of extending uh, working memory. And I'll talk about two concepts. Uh, first, modality effect. Um, the, your mind processes information separately. There's auditory and visual. First, for A, auditory. Uh, auditory items in working memory do not compete with visual items in the same way. So audit, auditory and visual are somewhat complementary. Visual, there's two visual items. If you have picture and text, they can compete with one another. And I'll give you an example below. If you have an explanatory information for a complex visual diagram, like maybe you just saw in the previous part of this video, uh, explanatory info information has less impact on working memory if it is narrated rather than added to an already complex diagram. 
So you wanted the narration helps better than additional text because it makes it too um, it makes it too even more complex. Therefore, multiple modalities are complementary, such as audio and uh, auditory. Um, 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 media and visual media. Uh, the second one is the schema effect. Here the working memory uh, treats an established schema, and a schema here is a knowledge structure as a single item. Uh, you will, if you have highly practiced automated schema, it counts a little against working memory, so if you practice something over and over again, it's not going to overtax the working memory. Uh, learning activities that draw upon existing knowledge help to expand the capacity of working memory. So if you've learned something previously, it can help. So I'll give an example that I can compare and contrast. So pretend you're, there's an example like you want to learn a, a sport, like tennis volleying. And volleying, for those of you who are into tennis, is basically when you hit the ball. You could have, if you want to work on the schema, uh, schema effect, have the, the, the beginner, they hit the ball against the wall, and they work on one skill, just basically hitting the, the, the ball against the wall. There's no partner. Uh, the basically the physics of it, it's a wall. It's pretty, it's pretty un understandable how the ball bats against the ground and the wall. It's very, it's very like similar over time. There's not the variance you have with the partner, so you can work on this. Just the the skill of hitting the ball against the wall over and over again to work on this and practice this uh, the schema of just hitting the ball. In contrast, um, here's an application. Or again, you want to you know, for uh, working media that treats an established schema and all structure as a single item. Again, here's an application. You want to pre-train or teach people prerequisite skills before introducing a more complex topic, like the one I just saw, talked about, volleying against the against the wall before you go into the more complex game of, of playing with someone. When you establish the schema, it extends working memory, and you can understand and learn more difficult information after you've practiced, pre-trained, and taught people more simple information than go to more uh, more complex. Example, let's, let's go back to the example of learning a sport like tennis volleying. So again, the new player would practice against the wall, the wall hitter, over and over and over again until they master to a certain level. And then after that, that sort of sim somewhat simple task and topic, then you play against an experienced player, and then it's like there's more variance because they're going to move around. Uh, they, may, they may hit the ball sooner than you expect, later than you expect, as opposed to a wall where you know. So basically working on your by yourself, the new new player hitting against the wall over time. If you learn a base and master that small, that small skill, that early skill, you pre-train, pre-train, you teach people, you establish that schema, and then you can um, apply to something more complex like the whole game. Here's some final takeaways and one question for you. Here are the takeaways: Working memory definitely has limits. It is not infinite, so please keep that in mind. Uh, you want to try to lower the demands on working memory and teaching and the use of technology. You want to ideally use complementary modalities such as uh, auditory and visual cues as opposed to overwhelming like multiple textual uh, cues, especially for if you're showing a complex diagram you want someone to understand it. And you want to have established schema to extend the working memory. So you want to have simple things repeated and highly practiced over and over again before you get to more complex tasks. Again, based on that, you want to teach these prerequisite skills, the simpler ones, before you get into the more complex skills. So you, work, uh, you build this working memory so that people will, will succeed on this later, more difficult task. Finally, questions for you, or more specifically, question for you. How, when you teach, so pretend you're a teacher in this context, how do you teach to maximize the working memory, correspondingly minimize cognitive load across your pedagogy? So if you think about that and you foreground that in your thought, you should again ideally maximize the working memory by you know practicing smaller skills and then and then that will um, uh, ideally minimize the cognitive load of your learners that was cognitive load theory thanks for watching my name is dino please feel free to like this video please feel free to uh, comment on it uh, do you think that uh, cognitive load theory makes sense to you are your thoughts on working memory what are your thoughts on the relationship between working memory and cognitive load uh, as a teacher, how can you uh, um, develop your pedagogy so that your working memory is, is maximized, your cognitive load theory is minimized for students, and so that they, you can ultimately maximize their learning. Um, thanks for watching. Again, please feel free to comment on any of those issues or the ones I raised, or come up with your own. Uh, and please feel free to subscribe to this channel if you like this type of content. 
As always, thanks for watching. Take care.